دفن الرئيسي وحضور مؤتمر الإسلاموفوبيا الدولي بدعوة من بعض الجهات الرسمية لكن أصرينا أن ندخل الغرف المغلقة وندخل عالم صناعة القرار في باكو بدأت جولتنا من مركز تحليل العلاقات الدولية اللي بيمثل الكيان الأعرق في باكو كانت في استقبالنا مختصة شؤون الشرق الأوسط لالا خليل زاده واللي بتتحدث العربية واللي بتصر دائما تحدثني بلغتي مرحبا محمد أهلا وسهلا إلى مركز التحليل للعلاقات الدولية أخذتنا لالا في جولة خاصة داخل أربقة المركز واللي كان طابعه بالنسبة إلي كلاسيكي ويعبر عن الثقافة المعمارية للبلاد وهذه رسالة قليل جدا اللي بيفهموها لفت انتباهنا خلال الجولة جدارية تقول إن استقلالية دولة أذربيجان هو إنجاز تاريخي لشعبنا إن الواجب أو الدين المقدس لكل واحد منا هو تقدير دولتنا المستقلة وحمايتها وتطويرها والارتقاء بها إلى مستوى الدول المتقدمة في العالم بتوقيع حيدر علييف مؤسس جمهورية أذربيجان ورئيس الدولة السابق التقيت بعدها برئيس المركز سعادة السفير فريد شافيع مستر باسر وي اولويز سي ثينك تانكس فروم ان اوردينري انجل ان انستيتيوشنال انجل از انتيتيز تو برودوس ايفيدنس بيست بوليسي ادفايس وات از ا ثينك تانك ان ذا ايز اوف ا دبلومات ذات از ناو ليدنج وان وات ايفولفز ان يور مايند ويل اف وي لوك ات ذا هيستوري اوف ذا ايمرجنس اوف ثينك تانكس اتس وي سبيك اباوت ذا 1920s It's exactly after the uh, First World War. The idea of think tanks comes from a uh, necessity to prevent uh, big geopolitical disasters. Uh, at the regional level, uh, definitely think tanks also works uh, toward regional peace, security. Um, we have uh, the, the global network of think tanks involved in different ma- matters, not only geopolitics, but uh, economic affairs, humanitarian affairs. I think at the 100 years, uh, we can look at the history and evolution of think tanks. And we come uh, to conclusion that the think tanks need to formulate policy recommendations Uh, to serve as a platform for policy discussion in order to uh, prevent uh, problems, wars, conflicts, or let's say on the positive agenda uh, to promote peace, security, promote cooperation, interaction, promote uh, within the government and among the governments uh, the modes of interaction. Well then, Mr. Farid, Aya Sinta, I see a vision, a clear mission, and real steps. What did you do? How do you manufacture its personality? And what are your aspirations for the future? Well, uh, the Center of Annals of International Relations is a relatively new institution. We just this year marked our fifth anniversary. Uh, for such a, a short term, uh, we try to establish uh, this think tank as one major foreign policy think tank in Azerbaijan. But also we try to outreach outside of uh, our national borders uh, regionally. We're working uh, with many think tanks across South Caucasus, a wider Caspian region, Middle East and Eurasia. Uh, with the Central Asian partners and partners in, in Europe. Um, Caspian region and South Caucasus particularly is, uh, I would say, uh, located at the fault lines. Uh, historically, it was at the um, cross-border civilizations, but now at the fault lines of the geopolitical interest. And sometimes those geopolitical interests are contradictory and that creates a lot of tension. So our uh, goal is uh, to work with partners uh, to envision better future for the South Caucasus and Azerbaijan in particular. And I think uh, if we judge from the number of publications we, we, we promoted, the conferences we organized in Azerbaijan and abroad, we can say that this uh, 
think tank is uh, recognizable, is something which uh, many other partners would like to work with. And we also are successful in promoting certain uh, foreign policy agendas nationally and internationally. So what are the points of concentration and the character of IA Center that you are making them as priorities? And are you considering yourselves uh, making impact domestically and externally? I should uh, underline two, let's say, avenues uh, of, uh, uh, of activities of Air Center. One is indeed uh, to monitor situation uh, in regionally and around the perimeters of Azerbaijan's borders and uh, report about uh, geopolitical events, about uh, security challenges, or just generally the situation uh, in domestic affairs in, in neighboring countries. That's the one way of, uh, or let's say one type of our activities. The, and based on that information to formulate certain policy recommendations. But the second uh, type of uh, our, our activities is, is to promote Azerbaijan's national interest, the foreign policy uh, which Azerbaijan is conducting. So in terms of the, the first type of activities, uh, I think we uh, managed uh, to spot or at least to, f to raise the flag with regard to certain challenges which Azerbaijan might face. Uh, again, we speak about uh, relatively short term, five years. And uh, I think uh, maybe someone outside should judge uh, how we are successful. But I think we uh, raised some important uh, foreign policy issues and some national security issues, it, uh, which has affect uh, domestically. Uh, in terms of the second type of activities, um, I think uh, judging from invitations, we are constantly uh, Air Center and its uh, experts receive from international partners uh, to speak at the different forums in Europe, in Asia. We can judge that uh, indeed we are at this uh, certain spotlight. From a diplomat think tanker perspective, what are the hotspots that you are intending to focus on in the near future regarding Azerbaijan and its ascending role in the region? Well, uh, Azerbaijan now, mm, it's important to underline, uh, turn the page of conflict and looking forward to promote cooperation into regional projects. Azerbaijan is hosting COP29, uh, UN Climate Change Conference uh, this year. Uh, there are certain other uh, priorities we have uh, inside Azerbaijan and outside and international uh, platforms such as a non-alignment movement, uh, organization of Turkic states, cooperation between the Middle East and South Caucasus, cooperation with Central Asia. So this is our uh, policy agenda for the, let's say, next one, two years. We will try to uh, implement uh, with the help of our international partners. Mr. Ambassador, I want to focus more on your interests in the Middle East, uh, Caucasus connection. And this, in my opinion, is a pure and hard task dedicated specifically for think tanks and through them. What did you do? And what is your agenda for the second version? In, in July uh, 2023, uh, we hosted a conference called South Caucasus Middle East. This is the first attempt to bring uh, think tankers and experts from uh, South Caucasian countries and uh, wider Middle Eastern countries. Uh, I think it was successful, uh, unfortunately, very um, problematic events, the conflicts uh, in, in, the, in the wider region. I'm speaking not only in the Middle East, but also uh, Russian-Ukrainian war created certain um, tension, um, even within think tank community too. Uh, so um, overcoming sometimes those problems, uh, it's not easy. So we uh, we're gonna continue with attempts to bring uh, different think tanks, sometimes from opposing, let's say, camps, 
from the countries which are doesn't have friendly relations, but this is what the think tanks, I think, should do. We uh, also uh, issued special uh, journal uh, dedicated to the cooperation between Middle East and South Caucasus. So we will wait for the opportune moment uh, to conduct the second meeting of experts from the Middle East and South Caucasus. I think uh, these links, historical links, which by the way exist for centuries between Middle East and South Caucasus, but um, now we're speaking about the uh, independent statehoods, we were speaking about the modern statehood uh, in, in the South Caucasus and Middle East. So we will await for a um, good moment uh, to have the second meeting and maybe to have discussion not only in Azerbaijan, but uh, in the respective countries in the Middle East and the wider Caspian region. In terms of the serious efforts that Azerbaijan is conducting to combat Islamophobia, we understand that this is a necessity at this crucial period. And I see Azerbaijan making effective steps towards that. Why and why now? Yeah, uh, I've been asked frequently why Azerbaijan is now taking initiative uh, to uh, in the fight against Islamophobia. I think if we look at the history of Azerbaijan, at uh, the history of conflict which was Azerbaijan was involved and imposed on uh, occupation of our territory, destruction of our cultural heritage, including Islamic heritage, one can understand why Azer Azerbaijan the, the front run runner uh, at the front of uh, fighting Islamophobia. Many policies uh, directed against Azerbaijan, many uh, media biases, which especially in the Western media, it comes from the uh, Orientalism, from Islamophobia, or let's say from the type of, uh, of, of uh, bias called Turkophobia or whatever phobia we, we, we can uh, speak about uh, different application of, of those terminologies. But uh, it's undeniable fact that uh, the heritage, Azerbaijani heritage, which is part of Islamic heritage, has been uh, targeted, destroyed. Uh, Azerbaijan as a country was targeted by some media outlets, uh, in academia also, we've seen the attempts to uh, promote uh, one-sided narratives against Azerbaijan, especially we're speaking about the wide network of Armenian lobbies. So that's the, our history, quite tragic history, recent history. But we turn the page of, of that history. Uh, still, uh, we believe the uh, region as a whole is, uh, is prone to Islamophobia, different uh, events, uh, sometimes terrorist acts. Uh, we've seen the attempt uh, to bring religion into uh, explanation uh, or let's say would-be explanation about the, the causes. While the causes of all these um, troubling events is indeed uh, foreign domination, uh, attempts to occupy territories of uh, in our country, a geopolitical fight between the global powers. So uh, we increasingly see Islamophobia in media, in social media. Uh, we're speaking even about digital Islamophobia. It was one of the topics of the, the second uh, conference on Islamophobia. So what's the goal? Uh, the goal is to create a network of uh, like-minded scholars and experts and policymakers who will fight Islamophobia in different forms? Uh, either it will be the media, academia, or let's say the uh, parliaments of uh, foreign countries where we see sometimes uh, the blatant accusations against Islam or uh, people who uh, follow the Islam. So I think it's the very important task and Azerbaijan uh, will continue this initiative uh, next year and hopefully that will be um, until we'll, 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 we can say that we eradicated Islamophobia. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. It was an honor and this was very, very fruitful. Thank you.
نحن نتعاون في داخل المركز كعائلية كعمل يعني كلنا جامعة بعض نتعاون نتعامل أهم شيء في أمل وحدة هذا الشيء يعني نحن نستقع نحن الزملاء في في وقت واحد يعني مثلا أنا متخصص في الشرق الأوسط عندما أكتب المقالة يتعلق مثلا العلاقات بين الأسيا الوسطى والشرق الأوسط عند عند زملاء متخصص في أسيا الوسطى نحن نتعاون نتعامل نجلس ونتفكر ماذا يجري في أسيا الوسطى هو يسأل مني ماذا يجري في الشرق الأوسط يعني في هذا السياق بالتنسيق يعني ليست فقط إيه إيه نعم طبعا يعني لكل العمل ليست فقط في مراكز الفكرية في كل الأعمال في ريان أعتقد يجب أن تكون هكذا يعني إذا سئلي ما كان موجود أستقاء يعني وضع كأستقاء صدقية يمكن أن نتعاون فيه بشكل ممتاز في رأيي أنا أعتقد